Hi, everybody. It's Craig from Picks and Parlays. And the NCAA tournament is finally here. The March Madness has begun already. It's Wednesday when we're recording this. So we've already seen, uh, you know, the first four on Tuesday. We'll see the first four tonight. And then, of course, Thursday starts the real deal. And that's what we're going to be covering. We're going to give you eight rapid-fire betting picks. We're going to have four sides and four totals, two from each of us. And I'm super excited. I know we got the team here. Super excited here. You can, of course, get any of these guys expert picks. We'll talk about how you can get on the specials we have after the first few picks. But let's kick it off. Wes is going to uh, – Sniper West going to kick us off here with his top side, his free side. Of course, you got to get his best plays over at the website. But – Oregon Ducks in South Carolina. South Carolina, slight favorite, minus one. I even see some Oregon uh, on some books out there. And the total set at 132 and a half. Wes, what do you like the side on this one? Well, fellas, um, so yeah, you have South Carolina, the number six seed, Oregon's number 11. And, you know, some people think the 11 seeds bark. And sometimes they do. But I like South Carolina here. I just think it makes sense. So Oregon, they won the conference tournament. Uh, but it's the same team that lost to Cal. They lost to UCLA. Uh, they did beat Arizona. I'll give them that. But, I mean, South Carolina, they're good, man. They finished one game out of first place in the SEC, and nobody really saw this team coming, you know, before the season started. They were picked dead last in the conference. So, Lamont Paris, he's done a fantastic job in his second year there. And Oregon, they were out of the postseason dis discussion before running the table in the Pac-12 tournament last week. So, you have a team that exceeded expectations in South Carolina and a team that got hot at the right time to get in the tournament. But I just think Oregon's luck is going to run out here. I like the Gamecocks. They've beaten Arkansas, Mississippi State, Florida a and uh, Ole Miss, and, you know, Kentucky and Tennessee, who a lot of people think could win the whole thing. So I just think Oregon's catching the wrong team at the wrong time. And I like South Carolina to roll here. All right. So there you have it. Sniper West tells you. Take the Gamecocks, SEC power, I guess. Uh, second, we got uh, Nick Earl, one half of your Earl Sports Bet twins. And he's got a doozy. The 8-9 matchup, Michigan State versus uh, Mississippi State. Michigan State, slight favorite. I even see some basically just pick out there. So make sure you search your lines, as always. Minus one and a half. Total set at 130 and a half. Nick, what do you like on the side on this one? Yeah, and these eight nine seed games are always like the fun ones here. They're always the pick them here in this spot. But here, but I had I have Michigan State more along the lines of a three a three point favorite in this game. I like Michigan just on the money line minus one twenty is where I got it. With the, sometimes with the tournaments, instead of laying the one and a half or the two, I'll just lay the small money line at a dollar twenty dollar twenty five things along those lines. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I've seen a trend with Tom Izzo as a lower seed. He doesn't lose early in the rounds. And if you guys are feeling a little frisky as well, grab a little plus 350 for the Spartan team to make it to the Sweet 16 as well. I've got a small bet on that too. I like Sparty to make a little bit of noise here in the tournament, and it starts with the win tomorrow. Yeah, interesting uh, Big Ten bunch. And let's be honest, there's a, a lot of Tom Izzo love out there. So uh, never go wrong when you're betting Tom Izzo. And I'm with with Nick. When you're betting minus one and a half in tournament time, don't do it. Take the minus 120 to 125 because I'm telling you, these games end on one, two, a lot. So uh, if you have small money line favorites, I would take uh, take take them. All right. Uh, don't forget, if you want to get on any of our experts, these picks, these aren't our absolute top plays. Of course, that's what people pay us for, to pay us to win for them. So you can get any of the experts here or any of them on the website. Go over to picksandparlays.net, 199 per capper. You can get in it or you go under the premium picks drop down, click on the two for one, you can get two cappers for the price of one, just $2.99. So that'll get you every play through April 8th, including all sports. So don't forget, we got baseball coming up, NHL, NBA, and then of course, NIT, CBI, all the other tournaments on top of the NCAA tournament. All right, so I'm going to give you the next play. And I actually did this video with our friend Detroit Lenny, speaking of Michigan State, Detroit Lenny, Michigan State guy. Uh, I got NC State here versus Texas Tech. Texas Tech minus four and a half, total 145 and a half. I'm not going to bore you with a long explanation here. I like uh, the big guy Burns for NC State. I like the way this NC State team, they're hot. I love teams that are hot come March Madness time. And guess what? We don't have to win. We'll take the plus four and a half. You don't even have to win. We could lose by two or three and still cover four. Uh, so I think I actually win. I'll sprinkle a little on the money line, but that's what I like for my side. Don't forget, this isn't one of my best bets. This is like the fifth play of the day for me as far as uh, Thursday's action. So next we're going to have David 
David Delano's got a nice, interesting matchup. Two mid-majors here, or mid-major conferences. I don't know if they're mid-major teams anymore, because both these teams have been in the tournament a lot lately. Now, Nevada Wolfpack, minus one versus the Dayton Flyers. Over-under set at 136.5. David, what do you like in this one? Yeah, so the line is saying that this is pretty close to a toss-up, and we've got the 33rd and 34th ranked teams in Kempom. Market is showing a lot of love for Nevada. There's a lot to like about this Nevada team. They're 33rd in the nation in three-point shooting. But I think that this Dayton team does some things a little bit better. Dayton right now, they're fifth in the nation in three-point shooting. And um, they're also very disciplined. They play slow but very efficient. 18th in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency. Their top four scores are shooting over 37% from three-point range. I love the big man they've got, Deron Holmes, who can shoot the three also averaging more than eight boards and 20 points per game. And one of the key things here for me, one of Nevada's strengths, they're great at getting to the free throw line, but Dayton has committed the fifth fewest fouls in the country. Out of tournament teams, only Creighton, only Creighton has committed fewer fouls than Dayton. Nevada, 259th in fouls committed. When it comes to a tight game like this, getting to the free throw line and things can make a difference. Dayton also a little bit better from the charity stripe. I'm taking the Dayton Flyers on the money line to get the win in this one as a slight dog. So there you go. A little A-10 love. Uh, Dayton at large bid from the A-10. Uh, now we're going to, David's going to snake us back and we're going to go totals now. So each of us will give a total. And he's looking at the Sanford Bulldogs versus the Kansas Jayhawks that came out yesterday. And it was like the McCollum kid's going to be out. Of course, he was out the Big 12 tournament, lost to my Bearcats in the opening round uh, of their tournament there. Now they're still favored by seven. Total 152 and a half. David, what do you know about this one? Because you must know something with uh, McCollum out here. Yeah, one thing with um, with McCollum out, um, it sounds like Dickinson is going to be able to go. Whether he goes or not, I think the key for both of these teams is going to be a lot of points. Kansas in, this, in the nation, 83rd in adjusted tempo, 67th in adjusted offensive efficiency. They're going up against a Sanford team. That averages over 84 points per game, eighth in the nation in three-point shooting, in 14th in adjusted tempo. This is going to be a track meet. Both teams, top 70 in adjusted offensive efficiency. They're going to try to outscore Kansas. Last year, even in the first round against an inferior Howard team, Kansas had a track meet in the first round, a 96-68 to game. Regardless of if Sanford covers or not, I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. And I think that this one is going to get at least in the mid-150s, if not into the 160s. There you go. There's our, our kickoff for our totals. I'm going to follow up next. Uh, before I do so, though, don't forget in the March Madness passes, 199 You can get all sports for one capper for 199 or you get two cappers for 299 To get the two cappers, go into the premium picks dropdown and click on the two-for-one. You see all the two-for-one offers, including the March Madness Pass. That's up there right now. And that includes all sports, not just college basketball in subway tournament. You'll get the NIT. You'll get the NBA, NHL, anything a capper has all the way through April 8th. All right, so we're going to be looking at a total for me here. Akron versus Creighton. Of course, Akron, what a way to win. Uh, I mean, maybe the weirdest way I've ever seen a conference tournament win uh, with the guy fouling up one with didn't realize that they were actually up one. They thought they were down. Uh, Akron, though, this has not been a good year for the MAC. Uh, it's been a and, and really, if, if you look at the only three teams in the Big East in the tournament, so if you believe that, then not a great year for the Big East, even though it was pretty top heavy with, uh, of course, Creighton, UConn, and Marquette. Uh, 12 and a half, so Creighton's the favorite. We're going to be looking at the total here at 141. I like the under. I just think this Akron team, they cannot score with Creighton. Creighton is one of the best offensive teams in the country when they, they really can shoot it. They have three or four guys, they have uh, the big guy inside, and to me, I just think this spells under. I also think it's going to be a lopsided game, and I always like unders in lopsided games. So give me the under 141 in sub late tournament. Just a heads up. Totals, the unders usually do a little better if you just go – if you if you every game, if you throw them all in a hat, the unders usually hit about 53%. So they definitely favor the unders. All right, next we're going to be looking at uh, – Nick's going to be going to a total in – Tim's favorite team, your brother's favorite team, is North Carolina. So I hope you got a little expertise from from Tim. North Carolina versus Wagner here, uh, big total twenty four or uh, a side of twenty four and a half. But we're looking at the total one thirty three and a half. Nick, I hope you got with your brother. What do you like here? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking at it more from the Wagner perspective than the North Carolina's perspective. Well, one thing I remember when watching this team in the first four game when they took on Howard is the fact that we have three Wagner players that play a, the full 40 minutes per game. They have seven active players on their roster. And one thing we've noticed with Wagner this year is they're one of the slowest tempo teams in college basketball. Why? You limit possessions and you limit the opportunity of causing fouls because you don't have the depth to deal with foul trouble. And I think that's exactly what Wagner is going to have to do here with North Carolina. Now, they didn't really do that as much with Howard, but they're definitely going to need to do that here with this much better North Carolina team they're going up against. At the spread, I kind of lean Wagner, but I like this under here. I think that they're going to slow this game down. They're going to limit the possessions in this game to stay out of foul trouble against North Carolina. And this is going to be one of those drag to a crawl type of games, which I think actually plays very well into getting the points in this one as well. Uh, but I do like this game under the total here at 133 and a half. This is one of the slowest teams in the nation. And North Carolina is pretty good defensively as well. I think that we could see both these teams, low possessions, low scoring, under type of game here. I like this game under. I Okay. Did you get that verified by, by Tim though? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> that's, that's the twin love there. All right. Uh, uh, before we get to the last pick, from uh, Sniper West, don't forget, get in on that $199 for one capper or two cappers, $299. Go over to the website. Every capper is up there for $199. Or, like I said, underneath the premium picks drop down, you click on two for one. That's always where the two for one, you could pick your favorite two cappers. So any of us, me or any of anybody else, any two you like um, for $299. All right. Sniper West here. We're going to wrap us up here. You, you kicked us off. We're going to wrap us up here. Uh we're going to be looking at Michigan State, Mississippi State. We already looked at the side in this one um, with Nick, but you have the total here. Total set at 130 and a half. What are you thinking here, Wes? So as you mentioned, Craig, so for Lenny's sake, we all do wish the Spartans the best of luck here because we know he's a diehard Sparty fan. And I do agree with Nick about Michigan State. I think they're going to do very well, and I think they're going to do very well through their offense tomorrow because I'm on the over here. And by the way, this is the first game off the board. It's 12, 15 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So both of these teams, they play to the under uh, typically. But I like the over here because, you know, earlier this year, Michigan State, they put up 88 versus Illinois and 80 versus Penn State back in February. So they could score. Uh, the winner here is more than likely they're going to face North Carolina. Um, you know, so it's probably not going to get any easier for the winner. But Mississippi State. They only scored 66 versus Auburn when they got eliminated, but Auburn can step up defensively, right? And remember, before that game, they had scored 73, 70, 89, 69, 89. Um, and I just, these dudes can score, right? So I like both teams to get up and down the floor. Also, too, you know, with the craziness of the tournament, Michigan State, they're favored by one. This game could go to overtime. We could have that in our back pocket. And I like the over. I think it sneaks over here. I always like close games if you're taking the, if you do take the overs because lots of fouls at the end. I mean, even if you're up eight or nine, you're going to start fouling with two or three minutes left. Sometimes if you're up fifteen, because you you know it's winning winning advance, so, you know just survive. So it's like you do it by any way possible. So uh, uh, okay, Lenny is running the uh, the cues here. One ninety nine for one capper, two cappers, two ninety nine. Lenny, let's do a rapid fire back through them. Um, I will go down here. Um, see if he can follow me here. Uh, so Wes likes South Carolina minus one. He also likes the over. Oh, Nick, oh, we'll go down that way. Okay. South Carolina minus one. Uh, Michigan State for Nick Earl. Uh, money line. Uh, I like NC State plus the points. Dayton for David on the money line here. Slight underdog. I see it. And then we're going to go back Sanford and Kansas over for David. I like the under in the Akron game under 141. Nick Earl didn't go to his brother, so take this what you way. Wagner under 133 and a half. And then we finish it up back with Wes over in that Michigan State-Mississippi State game. So those are your eight picks for our Rapid Fires Thursday NCAA tournament action. Don't forget, if you haven't done so, hit that thumbs up and, and uh, do us a favor. Leave in the comments what you like. Follow along. Hit the subscribe button so you, you don't miss out on all the stuff we do here daily. We will see you again. We will have... Friday's game, Lenny's going to be heading up and, and hosting this one for late Thursday night. We'll be posting that. So make sure you stay tuned for our rapid fire for Friday.